There's something special about characters who win by risking their own health bar. Hello? It takes guts to say, yeah, I'm gonna hurt myself, but it's gonna hurt you way more. So hold this damage and get ready to shake my hand after it's done. Because today we're discussing Predator, one of the most beloved guest characters in Mortal Kombat history. Netherrealm really nailed his gameplay by including famous attacks straight out of the movies, including his infamous self-destruct. <laughs> Once again, nothing beats the rush of risking your own health bar, so today, let's discuss the most dangerous attack in Mortal Kombat history. Alright, today we're discussing the most dangerous character Netherrealm has ever made. Because playing this character properly requires risking your health bar the entire match. And I bet that sounds stressful, and honestly, it is, but there's something so rewarding about a character that keeps your adrenaline pumping the entire match. So without any further ado, let's discuss Warrior Predator. Now this variation has a bunch of new special moves, but the most unique one by far is the self-destruct. That's what makes and breaks this variation. After a very short period of time, he detonates, and look at that. We we both took damage. In fact, I took more damage. And there's no way for the Predator player to stop this detonation from happening. Once you do the special move, you're committed. That detonation is going to happen, and it doesn't even matter if you're blocking. It does nothing to help you out. You're still gonna take the same flat damage. And you might be thinking, well, at least it's unblockable, but it's not. That's just for the Predator. I know the game words it kinda weird, but only the Predator can't block this move. The opponent absolutely can, and look at that tiny bit of chip damage, like what, 1%? Even if I spend a meter on this move, I I'm barely getting any more chip damage on the opponent. It's barely even worth it. Look at that tiny damage. I can do pretty much any other special move and get more damage than that. So yeah, this move on block is absolute garbage, and to make matters worse, if you're hit for any reason, the detonation stops. It's just gone. Now thankfully, you can at least block, and that won't stop the detonation. So in that one way, it's still better than Nimble Reptile. Now based on what I've said so far, you might think this move is absolute trash. It does more damage to Predator than the opponent, and even on block, it does nothing, and the Predator has no way to stop it from going off if he wants to. And I can understand thinking that way, but here's the thing. This move is actually godlike because it launches the opponent for free to extend combos, and Predator has so many mix-ups. He has overheads right here. The Predator also has low attacks like this string right here. Scimitar stab, detonation, full combo, boom, here we go. In fact, Predator even has low overhead mix-ups like this string right here. Boom, detonate, full combo, let's go. The reality is this character has so many mix-ups in his strings, and as long as the opponent is still barely in the air when the detonation goes off, they will be launched for a full combo. And once again, this detonation doesn't cost any meter. Instead, the only price you pay is your health bar. Or in other words, there's nothing to stop you from setting up the detonation every time and then going for an awesome mix-up, which means the opponent is constantly guessing. If they don't play Predator and understand his different mix-ups, they're going to be miserable because the guy has overheads and lows in every single string. And in fact, there's one more mix-up I forgot about, his throw mix-up. The animation on this move is so obnoxiously long that if you land it, you're guaranteed to get the detonation. Even if you land the throw right after detonation, you're still guaranteed the combo because once again, the throw animation is so absurdly long. And the same is true for a lot of Predator's moves. His scimitar stab has a very long animation, and you can't tell me that's not on purpose. It's definitely intentional. And then Predator also has strings like this with a long animation where he grabs the opponent, stabs them, and then boom, detonation. All these these animations are long on purpose. They're definitely designed to complement his detonation, and I absolutely love that because it makes this variation so much more viable. And I'm not sure if you noticed how much damage I got off of that throw, so I'm gonna show you the combo one more time. And keep in mind, this all started with an unblockable. Just look at that, 35%, and once again, didn't cost me any meter. That's pretty good. Melina had a combo that did about 4% more than that, and they took it away and nerfed her on purpose. So yeah, getting 35% for no meter and no damage buffs is pretty crazy. However, do be warned, you want to land the throw kind of early, because if you wait too long, then you don't actually get the stab, and as a result, you only get 7%. If I land the throw a bit earlier, I get the stab, and it's more about 12, I think? Yeah, boom, look at that, 12%. And one more awesome mix-up is his pounce. If you spend a bar, it launches the opponent, which means you can follow up, get the stab, and then detonation for a full combo. And what makes this special move so great is that it hits overhead. Now, the downside is it's a bit reactable, but check this out. Look how much faster the jumping version is. If you do it as early as possible, it's borderline unreactable. In fact, I'm gonna try and do it as early as possible. Oh my god, look how fast that was. There is absolutely no way the opponent is reacting to that. All right, but now let's talk about 
how to set this move up because as you can see it takes me a while before I can block. This move has a long startup animation. I think it's almost a full second or something crazy like that. And as a result you never want to do this thing raw. Instead you can do it at the end of a combo like this and now it's set up. However what's even better is setting up the smart disc because once this thing is on screen the opponent's going to be scared and want to block or at the very least they're going to be scared to come at you. And that's because this smart disc actually tracks the opponent's location. It will home in and find them and that's why throwing it from further away can actually be better because the longer that smart disc takes to find the opponent the more time you have to set up the detonation. In fact I was a bit slow there you want to do it like frame one like that land the throw get the mix up and let's go full combo. And once the opponent's scared of being thrown they're gonna block low which means instead I can run in with the overhead into scimitar stab and I still get my combo going. As you can see the smart disc is absolutely amazing especially if you can hit confirm it after a poke. You get it on screen, do the detonation behind it, and then run in for a mix-up. Whether it's a throw, a low, an overhead, or an overhead low, all that nonsense. You can also do forward four because it leaves the opponent on the ground for a long time, which means the smart disc is 100% guaranteed and you can go for the detonation. In fact, sometimes you can do detonation raw and the opponent can't respond in time. Or if you want to, you can even do the smart disc mid-combo because keep in mind, Predator has a bunch of ways to extend combos. He doesn't need the detonation, which means you can do air smart disc, then detonate, and be right in the opponent's face by the time they get up. And then after one mix in the detonation, half the opponent's life bar is going to be gone. But I know what you're thinking. Is there any way to combo directly into detonation? Activate it mid-combo, then keep the combo going, and then detonate for even more damage? And the answer is actually yes, but typically you want the corner, otherwise it's going to be almost impossible to set that up. And then once you do have the opponent cornered, you still have to spend two bars on the amplified smart disc, because it throws out two, and that's a very big deal. Because check this out, the first disc is going to land, but the second one is going to fly past them and then hit later. And that's the most important part, because we need that extra time to set up the detonation and then still recover in time to keep the combo going. So if everything goes right and you do the combo properly, you're getting some beefy damage for only one bar of meter. And also, you're styling on the opponent, which is always a plus. And you know what, since we already have the opponent cornered, let's talk about Dread Slam, because this special move is very unique, and it makes this variation even stronger, because this special move is actually safe on block. Check this out. The opponent can't retaliate in time. Even if the opponent does a down one or their fastest move possible, they cannot punish the Dread Slam. It recovers too quickly on block. It's not plus, but it absolutely is safe. And as a result, we can be a bit tricky with this variation. We can do the regular version, and if it's blocked, we can do the meter burn version, which has armor, and as a result, we can steal our turn back. And normally you don't get too much after it because it doesn't lead to a full combo, but it's still something the opponent always has to worry about. Whenever they want to take their turn, they have to think, is he going to do meter burn slam on me? And that's one more reason I love this variation. You can do anything minus and then do meter burn slam and just say, no, it's still my turn. But why am I bringing this up in the corner? Because the meter burn slam can work anywhere on screen as a reversal. It can always steal your turn. So why did I wait until the corner to talk about this move? Well, because you can combine it with detonation. You can set up the bomb and then do anything minus and then retaliate with meter burn slam just in time for the detonation and get a full combo. And I just want you to understand how godlike that is. You can do something minus and then steal your turn back for a full combo with the detonation. How sick is that? Almost no other character in the game can do this. And the same goes for his throw damage. I don't think any other character in the game can get 35% damage off a regular throw, even with a setup. I mean, unless we're still talking Predator, because his Hunter variation can get crazy damage off a throw, but even then, he has to spend bar. This is 35% damage without having to spend any meter. So yeah, this variation is crazy unique. Now, is it the best variation? Absolutely not. And is it viable at the highest level of play? Again, the answer is probably not. But like I've said in past videos, most of you watching are casual players. In fact, I consider myself a casual player too. And at that level, this build is certainly viable, 100%. And then on top of that, it's fun. If you're one of those players who loves to constantly be running in and going for mix-ups and pressure and has your adrenaline pumping the entire match, this is the build for you. However, also be warned, because like the title of this video says, this variation is the most dangerous character that Netherrealm has ever made. I hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. If you did, please leave a like down below. It really does help my channel out a ton, and I sincerely mean that. And while you're down there leaving a like, keep that combo going by subscribing and ringing that bell. That way you never miss a future video. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.